In this video, I'd like to talk about uncertainties in counting experiments. What's a counting experiment? A counting experiment is anything where you're trying to count something. For example, a lot of astronomy is counting experiments. Let's say you have, I don't know, a, a star out here. It's going to emit photons, particles of light, which are coming out in different directions. And in your telescope, you will collect how many photons hit your telescope per unit time during your exposure. Another example might be earthquakes. Let's say there's a crack in the earth. Every now and then you're going to get an earthquake. Let's say you're trying to measure the rate of earthquakes. What you'll know is you'll observe for a certain number of years and see a certain number of earthquakes above some threshold of detectability. So you might have six earthquakes in the last 10 years. Another example might be nuclear physics. Let's say you have a atomic nucleus and every now and then it's going to decay and it can decay in different directions and you might have a detector sitting here ready to see when it decays what particles come out. Now all of these are counting experiments and you might think that they actually don't have uncertainties in them because they're just telling you how many things you see. And you can tell this for sure. There were five earthquakes, not 4.75. There were six alpha particles emitted, but not 6.03. Because the answer is an integer, as long as your uncertainty is smaller than the gap between the integers, you can actually be quite certain how many photons you picked up, how many earthquakes went on, how many alpha particles were emitted, whatever it might be. So does that mean no uncertainty? Well, alas, no. Um, the problem is you don't actually care about how many alpha particles hit your detector at a particular time, or how many photons, or how many earthquakes, because you haven't observed it for all possible times. Let's say you're picking up photons from a star. You've learned how many photons happen to arrive at your telescope located wherever it happened to be at that particular time. What you really care about, though, is not that. What you really care about is the average rate. Likewise, if you're trying to work out a you know, map of where the most earthquake-prone parts of the world are, what you care is on average how many earthquakes are happening in particular places, not how many earthquakes happen to take place while you were measuring it over a particular you know, three years when you had a seismometer built in there. Likewise, in a particle physics experiment, what you care about is on average, you know, does it does a particle decay as an alpha particle 17% of the time, or 17.3? Um, what, you what you've measured, though, is not that. It's not the average chance of something decaying. It's how many happen to decay in a particular way, in a particular time. So this is the problem. What you want is the average rate. But what you measure is a specific rate at a particular time. And presumably those are going to have something to do with each other but they may not be exactly the same. So for example, let's say you expect to pick up um, one earthquake every 10 years. That means there'll be some 10 year periods when you don't get any. There'll probably be a, a very occasionally a decade when you get two or maybe even three earthquakes. Likewise, if you're trying to pick up how many photons and you're gonna get you know, a photon a second, some photons there'll be, some seconds there'll be none, some seconds there might be five photons. How many seconds do you have to average over before you got a really good fair rate? Well, the answer is simple. We measure this. We want to measure that. What's the uncertainty going from here to here? The rule is if you detected n events, photons, earthquakes, gamma particles, whatever it might be, uncertainty. is the square root of n. Very simple, very simple. Square root of n, but very important and very, very widely used. So let's look at it in, in an example. Um, let's say you had um, a 10 year period. You measured nine earthquakes. What is the rate? Well, 
but it's 9 plus or minus root 9 per 10 years. So that's 9 plus or minus 3 over 10. So the rate is 0 0.9 plus or minus 0 0.3. But let's say you measured it for longer. Let's say you'd observed for 100 years and found 100 earthquakes, say. Now your rate is 100 plus or minus root 100 over 100, which is 1.0 plus or minus 0.1. So what you can see is when you only measured for 10 years, you had quite a large uncertainty. There's percentage terms that say um, a one, one in three uncertainty, but going for a longer time, you've got a better uncertainty, in this case only a 10% uncertainty. So what this means is, as you have more and more events, the uncertainty goes up, but the rate, the uncertainty in the rate, goes down, because uncertainty in the rate is this, in some sense, divided by that, and that will go down as root n. So, the rule. Whenever you have a counting experiment, and you're going to pick up in some interval n events, the uncertainty is root n.